Well, hey, fish heads, what's going on? It is Monday, Monday here in the shop. Jen Cravasi with you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching, and I appreciate the view. I'm, I'm going to show off some more swim baits. I've got a few orders going out this morning, so I'm going to try and hustle through this as best as I can. But I'm going to start with this little guy right here. Now, this is not the KO. This is the actual... Evergreen ES flat side. You can tell the tail's legit. It's a black tail. Um, also, you can tell because the eyes are different. And on the um, on the imposter or the replica, the pressed replica, it's got uh, a much more pronounced lateral line on the middle of it. If you take note, this is the replica comes with a white or a clear sort of a clear tail this is a really cool pattern that my buddy wicked pete dog painted up for me a few months ago the eye is different takes a regular round eye whereas the legit one has a very special specialized eye um, the weight is just about the same between these and the real one um, just under two ounces they weigh in like one ounce and 15th 16th of an ounce um, but they are weighted differently as far as and you can also tell because that's one of the weight points right there and the replica does not have one so that's there's a few ways you can tell the difference but this is in a baby bass and this is going to fly out the door with a few other pieces so i want to get right into the other pieces but i was really happy how this turned out um, very happy with the baby bass pattern. So we will move on to this realizer. Now this is a depth. It's about four and a half inches right at 1.5, I think, on this one, on ounces. And this has gotten pretty decent reviews for the, for the price point. Um, it's a single teardrop shape. The cool thing about this wake bait version of it is that it will kind of troll down to almost five feet if you throw it on fluorocarbon, which is nice. Um, he asked for a shad pattern, so that's what we gave him. I kept the same eyes on. Usually when, when you have a good Japanese, uh, Japanese domestic market, you'll hear me say JDM a lot on this, on the shop updates. Um, they normally take the time to craft a good bait and they seal the eyes very well so unless you absolutely or your customer wants something completely different you're going to do more harm than good trying to pull these eyes out because they're in there really really well so this is that uh this is that shad pattern for them and mesh mimics scales you see that i'll do mesh on occasion sometimes frequently to mimic scales on a pattern. And then I've got another six inch Buca Bullgill. I've got a bunch of those coming in. Um, I've got another big order to finish up that's a bunch of bull stuff. So I may or may not do a, a spray session on one of the, uh, he wants a, a pearl rat. So that's uh, the last one that I have to do for him. But this is, this is that gill pattern and um, one of my fellow colleague painters and, um, and blank salesman, Daniel, was saying that this is not the easiest surface to spray on, but you can take advantage of it if you lay the bait down and you spray across it, you will be able to get that scaling pattern, that 3D effect on it, a little bit easier, which was fun to do. And then you just have to be real careful when you're brushing on whatever epoxy or clear coat you use. And then don't get it on the tail. Leave that tail just like that. Because these things are made really, really well. So there we have those baits. We'll set these back up here. I've got these little Bling 55s. And I made them in two colors for him. Got this reddish green for more stained up water and then 
if the water is a little cleaner. Although you can throw either in either situation and be fine. This is that blue veined, almost the spring craw like I have going on just off camera. I'll show you those in just a second. But some good blue veining and blue underlayer on the bellies of the bait. These little bling 55s come with flat eyes. Um, super gluing these eyes, you just have to make sure that you have the positioning correct on them. And I always use the CB lip as a point of reference to get the eyes on correctly on the same point to where you're looking at it. It looks like it's supposed to be there and they'll stay on for you and it will not affect the swimmability of the bait whatsoever. This is what I was talking about. Now this, you can see how chewed up my hands are. That's just from paint and stuff. Um, this is that blank that has, and you can tell I just pulled these off the rack, that has the eyes in it. So on the spring river crawl, I added those pearl eyes. And hey, so I forget what your name was. You referenced where you found those eyes again. Thank you for that. I got the message. I appreciate the heads up on it. And I will definitely, I think I already did order them because I like them. They're really cool eyes. But they were on uh, AliExpress. So, very cool. Thanks for helping me find those again. And I forget your name. I apologize. Lucky Craft. Little LVR. Finesse Lipless. And the larger Lucky Craft Lipless. And for these, I'm just using uh, Detail Black Magenta as the detailing, not black, like I did, like I did on these. And a pre-wrap wiggle wart. But we always keep the integrity of the wiggle wart name there. And I use a little tape. And customers appreciate it when you take that extra step to make sure that if they decide to sell it or for their collectors that that is intact and I would imagine usually the collectors leave it alone they don't want them repainted or touched um, this is going to get swimmed swam swam swum sometimes language eludes me but in that spring river craw cool patterns also got some mega bass lipless in the winter green and a smaller mega and one of the cool things about the baits that he sent me for repaint is that they already had some foiling going on so you can take advantage of that and use the foiling if you can this was a yellow foil um, just a plain Jane kind of a bait and I took advantage of that and transformed it into the winter green sunfish and if you use transparent paint you can really see how that foil shines through that that's going to be a super bait in the water I'm really excited to see what he's going to hook up on with this and then we've got that jackal rearrange 110 also was a foiled also able to take advantage of that for this pattern because it's a very light transparent color that I use for this anyways and the original eyes kept uh, these the megas I used the original eyes kept that the same this I added new eyes from John over at Jetson he's got some pretty nifty stuff coming out if it's not out already and then my customer wanted a yellow headed blackbird, which is so cool. I love doing different stuff. Um, this is very similar to how I would do a wrap pattern, but it also mimics feathers really, really well. When you use that detail fan brush, it really comes out well. So excited on him hooking up. And, and it makes me want to make a, a red, um, red wing blackbird for my area of the United States because they're all over our waterways. Um, absolutely want to do one for myself so you gave me a great idea I hope that I've done some justice 
on these for you. A little yellow-headed blackbird action. Go get them. And then finally, I've got a couple going out for Dirk. He gets a monthly deal where he's just like, make me baits. So I make him almost like a mystery tackle box of custom baits every month. I do that for a few customers that request them. And this is that uh, red salamander freshwater that I did the spray session on recently for small waters. And that is what we've got to show you this morning. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. We've got more spray sessions coming. I'm doing a fishing vid that I'm editing today and more orders going out the door. Take care. Love you guys. Mean it. Thanks for the view. Thanks for stopping by the channel. It's always good company. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting.